Hey, what's going on guys? Tom Davis here. I'm here at the Upstate Canine Academy and I'm gonna give you guys a step-by-step -step process on how to introduce the remote collar to your dog, a dog that you're training, a dog in the future, or a dog that you have at home. A couple things that you're gonna need in order to introduce this. You're gonna need a good e-collar. There's a significant difference between something you get on Amazon for 30 bucks and the Tom Davis dog tree unit. This is the e-collar we're gonna be using. I'll, I'll click the link in the description. You guys can check it out. You're gonna need a long line. I suggest a 15 to 20 foot and you're gonna need motivation. Make sure when you guys are introducing the remote collar that you guys are doing it in a non-distracted environment. This is my training facility, but there's nothing going on in here. Do not at any point during the introduction phase, take your dog off leash, work around heavy distraction, or even work outside. Make sure you're doing this in a very sterile environment so you can get your dog's focus and your dog can be engaged with you throughout the process because right now, all we're doing is we're teaching this dog a new language. So this is the Tom Davis unit. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the remote collar, you're gonna put it on, and in this case, we're gonna make the bungee nice and snug. Now you wanna make sure that you're feeling the contact points touching the dog's skin. So I can feel that it's really snug in the skin. I remove my fingers and now it's snug in the skin. That's really important. You're gonna be wasting your time and your dog's not gonna understand the remote collar if it's hanging down like this. A couple things before we get started really quick. This has 127 levels. I'm gonna be introducing on the four. Now it's really, really important that you guys also understand the difference between the stimulation and the pager on my remote collar or most collars. The introduction to the stimulation is exactly what you're seeing in this video. It's light, the dog can barely feel it. They're like, hey, what is this? Oh, that's you, okay, gravy, great. The pager or the front button here is the vibration. It's very aversive to the dog. It's very corrective to the dog. They do not like it, that's the point of it. So when you're using the pager, it's what I typically use in intervention training when I have a behavioral case or a dog that is dangerous to other dogs and they're reactive to people. We can simply use this to shut that behavior down so we can re rebuild the dog up. So it's really important. Do not use the pager when you're introducing this because this pager or this vibration, just like your cell phone, is 10 times more corrective than the e-collar stimulation we are using in the introduction stages. In order to find your dog's level, I suggest start between a four and a six and go from there. As soon as you start to see your dog maybe feel something physically act like there's a fly on them, you wanna go right below that. So we're starting off on a four, sound box is gonna go off, look at a break. She knows the place command as touch, so when I say touch, that's what that means. I'm gonna be holding the stimulation at a four until the dog gets into position. Look at a place, touch, yes. Good. That was my fault because I'm so used to saying place to my clients. Her place is actually touch. Break, we're gonna do this again. So you guys can watch, look what a touch, holding pressure. The dog gets all fours on and the pressure shuts off and then the dog gets paid. Understanding negative reinforcement is very, very crucial. So I'm holding the e-collar pressure until the dog gets all fours on or the dog gets into a position. I'll show you an example with a sit. Look what a sit, holding the pressure, the dog gets into a sit. Okay, break. One other question that I get is, Tom, do you press it at the same time? Yes, you do. Please remember, when I am doing this intro to the way that I introduce my e-collar with my dog, this is gonna be universal for you guys, but understand this is not punitive. This is not a correction. This is not an enforcement. So we are gonna ask the dog to do the behavior at the same time as the e-collar because we want the e-collar to match our voice because we want the dog to simply understand that this low level stimulation and sensation is in fact the handler. And the negative, like we talked about earlier, the difference between negative and positive is very simple. In the dog training space, it can be manipulated in so many different confusing ways. And let's just face it, negative for most people you think Punitive, you think corrections, you think pain. Positive means rainbows and butterflies and hot dogs flying from the ceilings. That's not that at all. That's marketing manipulation. Negative simply means we're taking something away. Positive simply means we're adding something. So negative reinforcement is we're using the e-collar to tap the remote collar. The dog does the behavior we ask and then we reward them. Let me show you exactly what that looks like in motion. Break, good. Quota, touch, good. So I'm reinforcing the place command or the touch command with taking the remote collar pressure away. Let me show you one more time. Look at a break, look at a touch. Yes, good. And she knows because the remote collar shut off 
that she did the appropriate right thing. The beauty of this, guys, is I'm able to talk to her from a half a mile away or sometimes even further, and she understands where it's coming from because we're introducing the remote collar properly. We're gonna do it again. Look what a touch. Yes, good touch. We're gonna do a recall. Look what it come. Good. Look what a touch. Yes, good. Stay. Another question I probably am gonna get from those of you at home is, well, Tom, when do you shut it off? Great question. I typically will shut the sensation or the pressure off from the remote collar once the dog commits to me or is committed to the behavior. So if I'm doing recall, it's gonna look like this. Quota come. Yes, good. Quota touch. Yes, good. Now, as you work with your dog, that may change. In the beginning, what I showed you guys before, is holding the remote collar pressure until the dog commits four paws on the mat. Now, as the dog starts to get more familiarized and understanding of the remote collar and understanding how to shut it off and better with that behavior, the e-collar may be just a quick direction. So that means, quote, come, it's off because she's committing to me physically. Quote, touch, and it's off because she's going there and she's committing. Now, you have to understand that in this process, the dog must know at least two things to introduce the remote collar. They must know how to go to the place on command and they must know how to recall to you. So we're gonna go back to the beginning of the session and we're gonna show you step-by-step step what it looks like now that you guys know what a finished product looks like. Break, good. So you got your long line. The only reason why we're using the long line is because we wanna be able to hold on to the dog. They don't know what the e-collar is. So we're not gonna be enforcing a recall. We're not gonna be using it punitively. We're not gonna be using it as a correction. It's gonna stay at its very low level at a four. We've done this many times with humans, but typically humans don't feel it on their face till about six to eight. Feel it on their face, on their wrist, 11 to 20. So this is really, really, really low just to get the dog's attention and associate it in conditioning theory with our voice. So whenever I say something to the dog, the remote collar goes off, the dog goes bingo, bango, that's you. We're gonna start long lines here just in case the dog wants to run away. Again, if you're dealing with the dog that's not been conditioned to this, that may be the case. We're gonna have our food ready and we're gonna start on our continuous nick. So you're gonna hear the remote collar go on to the dog as I'm holding it until they get to the place. Go to touch. Yes, good touch. I'm immediately verbally paying the dog and then I'm reinforcing with food. I'm using beef liver. And so I say, yes, good job. So she knows that she's accomplished the task. For those of you who are clicker trainers, this is exactly where you would, yes, click and then pay the dog. Okay, break. All right, now you're gonna do this pretty much for the first day over and over again, usually in four to six reps. Don't overdo it, I would do it six times and then give the dog a break and then do it again later. Now for the first couple of days, that's all this is gonna look like. Low level stimulation, almost all positive reinforcement. Good job, great job, you're doing good. Use your leash if you need to assist. Remember, we're not enforcing yet. So if I said uh, banana peel, let's say that's touched, but she didn't go, I would use my leash, I would pull her over at the same time as hitting the remote collar. Good job, break because you wanna make sure that you're not overwhelming your dog with all this new information. So now I'm gonna show you what the recall should look like for your dog as well. I've done it a couple times in this video, but I'm gonna do it a little bit more strategically now. So we're gonna give your dog a break. She's gonna get into something. We're gonna come. Yes, good girl. Break. As she physically commits to me, I shut the remote collar off. We're gonna come. Yes, good girl. Break. Now, sometimes a dog will take their time or their dog will diverge after you turn off the stimulation. So that means you're tapping the dog on the neck. As you recall them, they start coming towards you, but you've given yourself too much distance. The dog becomes distracted, puts their nose down and heads that way. That's where you do two things. A, you hold the stimulation down until the dog actually gets to you because that's something that your dog is gonna likely do consistently. Or B, you're giving your dog too much freedom. You're giving your dog too much space. You wanna make sure that you're making it as, as easy as possible for your dog to understand this. Now remember, all we're trying to do in this introduction stage is teaching the dog that this low level sensation that the dog barely feels is the handler. So one other really nice tip and nice exercise to do to really instill that with your dog is what I call a tap and turn. So all you're gonna be doing is you're gonna be walking back and forth with your dog and you're gonna be tapping the remote and saying heel or saying come depending on what your verbiage to your dog is. 
And then once the dog commits to you, you reward the dog verbally, and then you let go of the remote collar. Again, negative reinforcement. Good. So all you're going to do is turn, go to heel, and you're going to tap at the same time as you turn. Heel. So you're essentially replacing what you would normally naturally do with the leash with the remote collar. Tap, 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 release. Good girl, Coda. Good girl. Tap, 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 release. Now what it's probably gonna look like for you guys, brick, is this. As your dog is likely gonna be interested in other things, and I know that that's gonna be a reality for you guys, so I'm gonna show you how to work with that because you're not all gonna be introducing your dog to a trained dog. So tap, 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 turn, good girl. And then if your dog gets interested in something, go to break, you're gonna be tap, 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 yes. And then once the dog commits, you then release. So that's what it's gonna look like if your dog's a little squirrely on the leash, maybe not as smooth and as fluid as Lakota is, you're gonna be simply tapping the remote until the dog commits to you. Come, yes, good girl. Come, good girl. So those are those tap and turns, guys. Go to heel. Yes, good. Now you gotta remember, go to heel, that the dog is not getting punished right now. So you gotta get that out of your head. Come, everyone's always like, hey, I didn't have to use it. Hey, I didn't have to, okay, break. I didn't have to use it. I didn't have to touch the button. You wanna touch the button, touch the button. It's the new line of communication and new language to your dog. You wanna do this and flex this and exercise this as much as possible. You just have to get it out of your head that this is a correction, this is punishment, this is enforcement, this is not enforcement. We're not saying, hey, if you don't come, this is happening. We're saying, hey, this is happening with us. You feel this? That's me. You feel this? That's me. We're doing this because once the dog fundamentally understands, A, where this pressure's coming from and how to shut it off, and B, that it can touch you anywhere in the world, essentially, then your off-leash freedom to your dog intensifies and gets way bigger and your opportunities for your dog to fulfill their natural abilities to be a dog and run and sniff and play and have a good time just boom blows up you can go anywhere with your dog because when they're wearing the remote collar you can reach out and touch them now another thing that we get as we're discussing this exact idea right here is well well what what if the dog the battery's dead or what if what if the e-collar isn't on the dog or maybe i don't want to depend on this but the reality is, guys, is once the dog understands that you can touch them from anywhere, it gives you so much leverage that you know that your dog is gonna listen because you've, you've conditioned things off leash. You've taught your dog to respond to things off leash. A lot of dogs are right here and we're constantly four to six feet away from our dogs all the time. Therefore, when they're on the leash, they listen better or they understand that there's actual consequences for not doing stuff. But once that leash comes apart, this is the relationship that you want with your dog. You want your dog to say, yeah, it's no big deal. I've been off leash before. And the way to start introducing that with real understanding is the remote collar, which then leads me to the next thing. Okay, what does a correction look like with the e-collar? I'll show you what it looks like right now. This is the accountability. This is the only thing in the world, I don't care where you live, that can actually hold your dog accountable completely off leash. So we're typically, again, between a four and a six when we're conditioning. A corrective level is gonna be something that your dog does find punitive. Your dog does find it uncomfortable. That is the exact point when we're doing e-collar work. So in my collar, in my unit, we have the conditioning levels at a four come. The dog doesn't come because they're interested in what will be this case, beef liver. We're gonna smash a bunch of beef liver up. And in your case, it may be a squirrel or another dog or a person. And then once the dog doesn't respond, I'm immediately gonna hit the B button on this collar, which is gonna jump the levels to a corrective level. So I just set my unit to a boost of plus 10. So wherever I'm at with my conditioning levels, it's gonna be at a six and then plus 10 is gonna be a 16. Lakota comes, she's like, nah, there's something over here. Boost at 16. I don't know if she's gonna do it because she's my dog and she usually listens pretty good, but I also haven't worked her in a couple months because I've been touring doing seminars. So, and we're gonna make it as hard as, I want her to make a mistake just to show you guys what that looks like. So we're gonna go six and then immediately to a 16 if the dog is unresponsive. So you can see what a correction looks like with the remote collar. Food's over here. Oh, look at all this yummy stuff. Lakota's licking her chops. Lakota, come, unresponsive, 16, come. Yes, good girl, good girl. Let, good, okay, break. 
good. Now we do have one theory about, well, make sure you don't correct the dog when they're doing something because it'll deter them from doing the thing in the future and they're gonna be fearful of that thing. And uh, that's debunked here. I corrected her because she didn't come back. I never corrected her because she's getting into the food. I'm gonna do it one more time just to demonstrate what the actual correction may look like for your dog. And in most cases, it's gonna be, I'm not listening, okay, I'm listening. Because the what happens is the stimulation from the e-collar intensifies, so the dog actually may not even feel it at a level six when they're really into something really motivating to them. And once we bump it plus 10, equaling to 16, they're like, oh crap, and then they come back. So sometimes it's not even that they don't respond to the six, it's because they're so motivated by what they're into, they don't even feel it. It would be like us having a conversation right now at a conditioning level, and then you insert us into a Metallica concert. I'm gonna have to talk a lot louder to communicate with you because our environment's changed. We're gonna do that one more time. Go to come. Good girl, good come. Yes, okay, break. That's the e-collar correction. I know that there's the e-collar or the remote collar can be this really, really polarizing political, holy crap, we gotta, and it's banned in some places. And I wanna talk, touch on that really quickly because I think it's important for this video to, to understand like, as you're looking up different types of ways to train your dog, I don't know everything. I don't act like I know everything. I've just really specialized in a couple things in my canine career to give you guys at home free advice in order to introduce things right, train your dog right, understand your dog in a healthy way. Now, the reason why I think this tool is maybe looked at differently uh, or even frowned upon is because if I turn this sucker all the way up and I nailed her for doing something or not doing something, she'd hate this thing but I would never introduce it that way. And I hope that you understand the difference and the subtleties between how to introduce this the right way where the dog understands fundamentally what the remote collar pressure is and how to shut it off. Now you guys just saw right here what the e-collar correction looks like. She's so into that food and she's like, yeah, right, dad, I'm not coming back. And then I went from a four to a 14 and she's like, okay, I'll come back. That's what the e-collar correction is. That's all it looks like. Now, the important thing to understand after that correction is that she will come back without the remote collar. Just wanted to demo for you guys what it looks like. But I think right now, she'll do just fine. Go to break. Let's do it again. Go to lap. Yes, break. So that's the most important thing whenever you're introducing either a reward-based system or a type of correction to make sure your dog is being held accountable. Now, I love my dog and my clients more than anything else that you guys would ever know. And I am not naive to animal behavior and understanding that my dog isn't gonna just do something for me because I have a little hot dog in my hand or I have a piece of food or beef liver in this case. I understand that there's gonna be things and drives and attractions and scents and all these things that are gonna happen when my dog's like, I'm not listening to that because this is going on. And I just wanna make sure I'm gonna give my dog the off-leash life because that's what she deserves. That's where she's happiest. And if you're going to do that, I highly suggest introducing the remote collar to your dog so you have that accountability if your dog doesn't listen. That was a perfect example of correcting my dog that one time and then I put my hands out of my pockets, no e-collar involved and I said, come and she, boom, she came came right to me because she knows there's accountability if she decides to blow me off. And that's because I love her. If she's out and she's running at the beach or she's in the trail, whatever she's doing, I want her to come back when I call her. And that's important to me because it is the difference or could be the difference between life and death. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have, do me a solid favor, like this video. And remember, I have a full in-depth course on the e-collar introduction in the description below. And I am using the dog show Tom Davis 280C edition, which I'll also link below. I hope this was informative. I hope that it was helpful, insightful. It gave you an opportunity to see what the e-collar is, how to do it the way that I do it, and also what it looks like to correct the dog in an e-collar and how it can be as subtle as I'm not listening. Okay, now I'm listening. Beautiful, lovely job. Thank you so much for listening and I'll talk to you later.